Memories are consolidated during sleep. This is known for more than a century. Now, more recently, it has been shown that sleep in particular supports the consolidation of hippocampus dependent memory and that this consolidation takes place not during REM sleep as it is I think the common opinion since Sigmund Freud but during slow wave sleep which is the other core sleep stage. Now the EEG during slow wave sleep is hallmarked by the so-called slow oscillation with a predominant spectral frequency of about 0.8 Hertz. This slow oscillation is generated in the neocortex and indeed plays a key role for the consolidation of such hippocampus dependent memory during sleep. As shown here, it is basically assumed that these slow oscillations via efferent pathways drive the repeated reactivation of memories here in the hippocampus, which stimulates the redistribution of these hippocampal memories towards extra hippocampal, mainly neocortical, long-term storage sites. Because of uh, their importance in memory consolidation during slow wave sleep, there have been, of course, many attempts to increase these slow oscillations to improve memory and memory consolidation. Also, auditory sounds uh, were used in these attempts, which were presented in the brain's slow oscillation rhythm to entrain the brain to an external rhythm. But all these attempts to drive the brain's rhythm during slow wave sleep by an external pacemaker were not very effective. We think this is so because the brain's own slow oscillation rhythm is generated with a considerable jitter. That means this uh, brain slow oscillation occurs uh, with uh, quite a, a temporal heterogeneity. In fact, uh, this a little bit shaky rhythm of the brain led us to the idea to use, instead of external uh, uh, pacemaking, uh, the uh, slow oscillation rhythm, led us to use closed loop auditory stimulation where we first sense the brain's own ongoing slow oscillation rhythm during sleep and then whenever a slow oscillation is detected, present auditory stimuli, brief clicks, such that they occur in phase, in synchrony, with the brain's own ongoing slow oscillation rhythm. Imagine a swinging swing that is slightly pushed at the right moment, in phase with the swinging. And in this way, we could, in fact, distinctly enhance the oscillation, the amplitude of the slow oscillation, and also the duration, the length of the slow oscillation trains. And then eventually we could demonstrate that uh, the slow oscillation rhythm, which in this way is enhanced by in-phase auditory stimulation, also leads to a distinct enhancement in the retention of hippocampus dependent memories the student subjects had learned before sleep. So, what did we do in our experiments? With the first experiment, the goal was to synchronize the sound stimulation specifically with the up phases of the ongoing sleep slow oscillation. We examined 11 subjects under two conditions. One in which we applied the clicks in phase with the slow oscillation and a sham condition where we actually didn't apply any clicks at all. Before the night, the subjects memorized 120 word pairs. Recall of these word pairs was then tested after sleep on the next day. For the detection of the slow oscillation, we used an electrode placed over the prefrontal cortex. Here's an example of how the auditory stimulation works and how it sounds during an experiment. The EEG trace above shows the incoming signal obtained from the prefrontal EEG recording, filtered in the slow wave range between 0.25 and 4 Hz. The gray horizontal line 
in the EEG trace depicts the adaptive detection threshold. So each time the prefrontal EEG signal crosses the threshold from above, the stimulation routine with two click presentations is triggered. This figure here shows the average EEG activity time locked to the first auditory stimulus across all subjects. And you see here that this synchronized stimulation is very effective in inducing a train of full blown slow oscillations. And this enhancement becomes even clearer when it is compared to the average EEG obtained from the sham condition, shown here by the black line. If no auditory stimuli are applied, only the detected slow oscillation is visible but thereafter, slow oscillation activity quickly fades away. As a consequence to the enhanced ongoing slow oscillation activity, during in-phase click stimulation, subjects perform significantly better on the word pair memories after this C period. In fact, each of the 11 subjects showed a clear benefit in word pair recall from the in-phase auditory stimulation. Most importantly, we performed a control study to test that it is indeed the synchrony of the stimulation to the slow oscillation upstate which is critical for the enhancing effect. Hence, in this control study we used out-of-phase stimulation. In this out-of-phase stimulation condition, the first click was presented right away when a negative peak of an ongoing slow oscillation was identified. And the second click followed with a distinctly shorter delay of about 500 milliseconds. In this case, the second click tended to fall into the hyperpolarization caused by the first click. This procedure, as you can see here by the blue line for the out-of-phase stimulation condition, was indeed effective to acutely disrupt the ongoing slow oscillation activity. However, as soon as the acute out-of-phase stimulation was discontinued, the suppressing effect ceased and reached comparable levels with the sham condition. In the end, over the three and a half hour period of out of phase stimulation, slow oscillation power was not significantly lower than in the respective control condition. Corresponding to this unchanged overall slow oscillation power by out of phase stimulation, we also did not find any improvement in the retention of word pair memory after out of phase stimulation. Altogether, these data underline that it is the exact timing of the auditory click stimulation. So it's synchronization with the brain's own slow oscillation rhythm that matters, that produces higher slow oscillations and longer trains of slow oscillation, and consequently enhances hippocampus-dependent declarative memory for word pairs.